Happy Election Day, everybody. Yes, today is the day where we head to the polls and decide which man who should be running for president of the local chapter of the Elks Lodge gets to be leader of the free world. And it's the most consequential election in our lifetime, which I think may be true, but if it's true that it's the most consequential of their lifetime, that's impressive because they've lived through like half of American history. And personally, me, like a lot of people, I'm very anxious, very anxious to see if my preferred senior citizen with declining mental health beats the other senior citizen with declining mental health. Seriously, could we just pick someone who's in their 40s instead of from the 40s? Now take that anxiety and mix in some depression from everybody fighting and the panic over not knowing what's gonna happen right after the election and whether or not there's gonna be some civil unrest and well, this is the worst smoothie ever. No, Jamba Juice, I do not need the existential dread boost today. I'm good. But we are more divided than ever, right? As long as you ignore, like, slavery and, like, an actual civil war and, you know, segregation and the fact that not that long ago women weren't even allowed to vote. But we're more divided than ever. Nonetheless, many of us are anxious and worried, and that's understandable because if there's one thing we know about this great country of ours is we love winning almost as much as we hate losing, which just causes these uncertain times to be even more uncertain. So here are some things that are helping me, helping me get through these times that maybe they'll help you as well. Some things that you can focus on to maybe help you get through this election day slash two months. How long is this going to take, honestly? Firstly, it's good that people care. I look at the passion and I'm encouraged. It's exciting that people care about these things and they care about our democracy. And a lot of our concern has to do with voter fraud and voter suppression and, you know, is it all going to work out? Is it going to be fair? But we have to remember in our heart that cheaters never win. Okay, dang it, I take that one back. Another important thing that always makes me feel better is to remember the internet is not real. That is not a representation of what's actually happening. Twitter doesn't determine elections, Facebook does. But it's the fighting that isn't real. That's not the real world. That's just this little representation of it. That's fake. The real world will still be there. On Wednesday, you'll get up and you'll go to work and you'll check your email and you'll get mad at Susan because once again, Susan killed the coffee without refilling it. Susan Susan always does that. And you know, many people are worried about four more years of Trump. And listen, I get it. And I'm just trying to think about maybe some silver linings. Like if we do get Trump for another four years, then we'll get him for an Olympics. And you may not be crazy about Trump, but trust me, during an Olympics, he's exactly what we want. We have the best pole vaulters. We do. We have the best poles. We have the best vaulters. We have the best little pads. Who's going to beat us? Sweden? Sweden is going to beat us. We're going to beat Sweden. Then I'm going to buy Sweden. And hey, you may not be crazy about Biden, but if Biden Biden wins, hey, no more terrible Trump impersonations. Another thing, and this happened a lot during the last election, is people talked about, hey, if Clinton wins or Trump wins, and now if Biden wins or Trump wins, I'm gonna leave the country. You totally can. You know what's great? Other countries, so many great countries. The one right above us, Canada, it's fantastic. Vancouver, have you ever been to it? It's like Seattle with the metric system. And just like Seattle, they got their NBA team taken away. I'm from Seattle, why do I hurt myself like this? And you know, come Wednesday or whenever we know who actually won and your preferred old man doesn't win, take heart. Remember, you care more about this politician than they care about you. Your friends, your family, those are the ones who care about you and you care about them. They're always there for you. They're like dogs, just unconditional love. And politicians, they're like cats. They're just mostly indifferent to your existence. They just want you to feed them slash vote for them. And then after that, they're just going to clean themselves and kill rats. Real talk, I'm not sure if this is the best or the worst metaphor in history. And listen, Say what you want about Kanye, but he is right. Empathy is the glue. There are millions and millions of Americans who this election absolutely affects. There are marginalized groups, unprotected groups that are hurting. Think about them, but also think about the voter. Both sides share the same worries, that they'll be unprotected, that they'll lose some of their rights of choice and expression and speech. Fundamental things to what it means to be an American that they fear they're going to lose. And to disagree is great. That's so much of who we are as a country, but to villainize someone just because you disagree with them and not try to understand where they're coming from, well, now you're not supporting a politician, you're acting like one. One way or another, it'll all be over soon. I mean, probably. Let's be honest, this is going to get stretched out for weeks or maybe months, and then we'll restart the cycle in a couple years. You know what, Disney, could you just give us all those Mandalorian episodes?